Hello and welcome to High School Football on WOSN. Alongside Dar Nevergal, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight we're in Macomb for playoff action. It's the second round here in Panther land as the Panthers welcome the Pandora Gilboa Rockets to Doc Miller Field. Dar, excited to be with you. Two very good PVC opponents. And hey, in the regular season, only seven points separated these two schools. Yeah, and actually in that regular season game, Pandora Gilboa is up 28 to 21 in the fourth quarter and McComb came back with two touchdowns to win that game. The last touchdown coming with less than a minute to go. So I expect an exciting game again tonight. Everybody should get their money's worth. The biggest thing with this is though, since that first game, we've had a lot of changes in personnel, particularly on Pandora Gilboa's side, as well as McComb's side, as far as who's playing what positions and stuff. So who knows, you got Pandora coming in at eight and three, you got you know, Macomb Panthers coming in at 10 and one. They're only lost to Marion Local in the week two. So, you know, since then they've been rolling through the schedule. So let's see how it happens. Macomb will kick. They are wearing the black uniforms. The Rockets in the white uniforms with the gray trim as we are almost underway. Macomb, the BBC champions, as Dar said, 10 and one this season. They lost only one game to Marion Local, who honestly might be one of the best teams in the entire state, no matter the division, as this one is underway. Up in the air will be returned from the four-yard line. And the Rockets with Aiden Morris get up across the 20. And they'll start at about the 22-yard line on offense, led by freshman quarterback Corey Girton, who had a great week last week against USV. Yeah, he certainly did. I mean, both these teams had good weeks last week. Of course, McComb with a 57 you know, three win, I think it was, last week against Eden and, you know, Pandora Gilbo with a 42 to eight win over a very good upper side of the Valley team. Gert, this season, 55 of 82, eight touchdowns, five interceptions. He's thrown for 868 yards. And he has that low crouch as he takes the snap and gives to his running back, Ethan Luganbill, who's wrapped up in the backfield, might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Ethan Luke and Bill, you know, coming in this game, the leading rusher in the BBC coming in to this. And, you know, he's a very strong runner, very solid runner. You know, has speed when he gets to the outside, but he's very strong on the inside, too. And it takes a couple guys to bring him down. 31 touchdowns this season. Nearly three touchdowns a game on average for Ethan Luganbill as he'll carry this on second down. Looking for the edge, nowhere to go. Wrapped up, brought down, a big loss and a big third down coming up for the Rockets. Yeah, this Macomb defense is really fired up right now and it's obviously they're gonna key on Luganbill all night long. So PG's gonna have to switch it up a little bit, give him a little more running room, maybe throw, put the ball in the air. Likely a passing situation for the young Corey Girton. Stands at 5'9", 140 pounds. He's got two wide receivers stacked on either side of him. Luganbill lined up to his right. Girton looking left, throws. That one's caught and a first down as Aiden Morris, the leading receiver on this team, has the first first down of this game. And our first downs tonight are sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling. And we've seen Girton do that. I mean, he's got an arm and he just fires that thing in there. Just a bullet in there, but boy, it's nice to have a receiver in there like Aiden Moore. 67 catches this year, 1,091 yards, 13 touchdowns. Morris lined up in the slot to the right. Luganbill lined up behind Girton. Fullback Wyatt Russell, the up back as Girton gets it, or excuse me, Luganbill gets it from Girton. He's brought down in the backfield once again, this time by big 67 Elijah Gibbs. Yeah, you know, Luka Bill's going to have hard yardage to get tonight. I'll tell you what, you know, there's just no room out there for him to run on the tackle scene. So he's going to have to get to the outside. It's a loss of three, second down 12. Three rushes for negative four yards for the Rockets to start this game. Girton will look to pass this one. Nowhere to go, steps up, now throws over the top. A flag comes out. This ball is intercepted. It looked like there is a defensive holding around the 41 yard line. We'll see what the referee has to say. Has intercepted. Girton really nowhere to go with that ball, just threw it into no man's land. I say that, but there was one man, but he was wearing black. 
Yeah, he was certainly getting a lot of pressure back there. And there was good coverage by the secondary from McComb on that one. So it is indeed a holding against McComb. I'll tell you, if there's one thing that's hurt McComb this season, which is very few things that hurt McComb, is penalties. They've got 66 penalties coming into this game, averaging about 50 yards of penalties per game. So free 10 yards for the Rockets. Stays second down, but this time a second down two. Second down and two for the Rockets. The ball at the 50-yard line. Rockets have not had a positive running play yet tonight as Girton for now alone in the backfield. Luganville in the slot to the right. Now he motions to the backfield. He'll get the carry and he is brought down for a gain of one, but not quite enough for the first down as we'll have a third and short. Well, I'll tell you what, these Panthers are really eating them up on the inside. You know, their big front line is just not allowing Lukeville any run, running room at all. And that one, they kind of switched it up a little bit. The Rockets did try, try to get him, you know, a little bit of a head start on that run. But still, he could only get one yard out of it. Luganville behind Girton. Wyatt Russell to Girton's left. It'll be Luganville up the middle. Runs right into the defense, and he's brought down to the backfield. Once again, how about the penetration Man. from the interior of that defensive line? There is no chance right there at all. It looks like you all, when you got your secondary coming in there and, and hitting them as well, and that's Andrew Switzer in on that tackle as well. So only one play that went for positive yards for Pandora, uh, kind of two. One went for a yard, one went for about 14, but the rest all negative yards. And the Rockets will punt this away. Morris kicks it to the left, and that'll just go out of bounds. The referee still waiting for the official spot. Still walking, still walking. Here we go, 34 yard line where the Panthers offense will start, a team that likes to keep the ball on the ground. They'll throw it every now and then, Dar, but for the most part, they like to run the ball, especially with Andrew Swisher. Yeah, that's pretty much been their MO for several years now for uh, McComb and, and Andrew Switzer. As long as you got him in the backfield, you can run that ball. And you got Brad Mills, Montana, Montana Pierce as well. And this is Braxton Althauser. Althauser around the edge as he's finally pushed out after going out of bounds. Althauser, the second leading rusher on this McComb team. Yeah, Braxton coming in with 71 carries, 709 yards, 15 touchdowns. Swisser, you know, coming in 139 carries, 1,365 yards, and 20 touchdowns. So. You're right, you know, we're gonna keep it on the ground as much as we can. Switzer, the player of the year in the BBC on off, the offensive player of the year and defensive player of the year. And this is Swisher on this play as he picks up a couple positive yards. And hey, shout out to the cameraman Andrew after that Swisher play. Yeah, got hit hard by Althauser, got right back up. And got a standing ovation from this McComb crowd. Yeah, check the camera, make sure it's okay. Russell, on the stop. The Dangerous position to be four. in, cameraman or woman on the sideline. Yes. Second down six for the Panthers. Chase Woodruff, the quarterback, under center. He takes the snap, he'll give to Swisher. Swisher nowhere to go, but still on his feet. Able to pick up a yard or two. Hey, he made something out of that on that play right there. Andrew Swisher. That's the thing with these, uh, you know, McComb running backs. You know, they, can't, they keep their feet moving. They like to go north and south a lot. They'll get to the outside with Swisher, and as you saw with Holthauser as well. You know, they've got speed on the outside, but you know, if you're going to go off tackle, they're going to keep moving forward as much as they can. Third down five. Left side this time. Swisher powers his way forward to the 30-yard line, and that's enough for a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Yeah, switched it up a little bit this time, went on a little bit on the left side. Swisser kind of walking over with a little bit of a limp on that last play. 
See if he can walk that off. He's going to stay in the game, though, for uh, McComb. And send him out to wide to the outside. Woodruff takes the snap. Broken play. He tried to hand it to the left, but broken play ends up going for positive yardage. He picked up about seven or eight yards on that one. Well, Chase Woodruff, you know, Hasn't thrown the ball a whole lot this year. He's normally a wide receiver on this team. Moved him in under center. He's only thrown eight times this year, completed six of them for 192 yards. But So he, like we said, they don't throw a lot, but when they do, it's effective. You know, they got a couple good you know, receivers out there. You know, Cam Glauser is, you know, out there as well as a couple other ones. And they'll throw it out there. Aldhauser, nice cut. But an even better tackle right there by Aiden Morris. Stops him short of the first down, a third and short coming up. I've seen Althauser put his foot in the turf and get right by guys, so good job by Morris bringing him down. Yeah, that's a, that's a key thing. You know, if you're going to try to tackle these guys, whether it's Althauser or whether it's, you know, Swisher or whoever, you got to hold your position and you got to make that an open field tackle. you got to hit them low around the legs and knock their legs out from under them. Third and two, they give it back to Aldhauser. He gets enough for the first down and more. Northwest Ohio recycling. Busy tonight with those first downs as McComb is putting together a nice drive. Yeah, they certainly are. And they're eating up a lot of time off the clock, which they're very good at doing as well. You know, they'll just keep running the ball and run the ball. That was one of the keys as far as Chris Alger was saying. You know, we need to run the ball on offense and we need to get first downs. And so far his game plan is working to perfection. Left side this time, Swisher. Swisher gets up to the 11-yard line. Another nice pickup. Clock continues to tick. McComb controlling possession as you would have imagined. Well, the key is, is these young running backs are getting into the secondary, making the, you know, the defensive backs make the tackles. Swisher again on the left. And Swisher near the first down marker. He's going to be short. It's going to be third and about well, third and a yard. Third down and one for the Panthers. And McComb big up front. I mean, they've got Owen DeWeese, Logan McGill, Madden and Anandor, Nick Bormuth, and Elijah Gibbs up front. And that is another Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Clock stops briefly at 4.42 in the first quarter on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Always appreciate the sponsorship of the scoreboard today by Sprunger Insurance. That was Montana Pierce on the carry from the cone. Now up the middle and a touchdown. McComb keeping the ball on the ground all the way to Pater. 11 plays, 66 yards. Wow. And Montana Pierce getting his fifth touchdown of the season. PAT on the way for the Panthers. Brad Meals. Kick is up nice and high. My goodness. That would hit the moon as it goes through, and McComb leads this one 7-0. We'll be right back with more on WOSN after this. This kick goes all the way back into the end zone. A touchback, and now the Rocket offense will come back out. Only 21 yards gained on that last drive on five plays. Well, the biggest thing was holding Ethan Lukeville in check. I mean, Lukeville comes in with 1,723 yards, 31 touchdowns, as you mentioned, Evan. And they were able to stop him on that first drive. He had nowhere he could run the ball to. They're keying on him. The front line for you know, defensive front for McComb is holding the ground, and the linebackers are coming up and making the plays. 
Go to Luganville. He's got a lot of space to run as he picks up the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. And just to correct myself, it was six plays, 16 yards on that first drive. But a nice chunk of yards there for the Rockets up to the 35-yard line. Yeah, Luganville hit that hole quickly and got through there. Nice tackle by Cam Glauser out there to, to bring him down, you know, to stop him from that. Could, could have been a touchdown right there. Go back to Luganville on this one as he picks up a couple. That's a typical Luca Bill run right there. Just ducks his head down and drives and forward. Three-yard three pickup, second and seven coming up. Clock down to 335 already in the first quarter. Man in motion. Now looking to pass his Gert. He gets hit as he throws, but he completes it to Morris. Morris still oh. on his feet. Morris still going as he picks up the Northwest Ohio Recycling. First down and into Panther territory. Go the Rockets. Great job by Morris just to get those extra yards. My, then my had over his jersey and he just pulled out of that. You know, one of the keys when you're going to go for that extra yardage like that is holding on to the football and he did a nice job of doing Rockets. that too. From the McComb, 48. The pass has been very effective for you know for Pandor Gilboa so far. They'll run this one as Luganville bounces it to the outside. Luganville with plenty of space. Luganville across the 25 and pushed out at the 20 yard line. So another big pickup for the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down and the Rockets moving the ball very effectively. Well, that was a key play for there for Lukeville. Bounce to the outside, had a lot of open room on the outside. Pushed out of bounds by Andrew Switzer along that right sideline. But you know, once Lukeville saw there wasn't any opening where he was going, you know, initially was headed, you know, just took it to the outside and just turned on the Jets from that point. So first and 10, Gurton takes the snap. They give it back to Luganville. This time not much space, but he makes his own as he makes a guy miss and picks up about nine, maybe ten. Look at me on the ball carrier. That makes you wonder, Evan, what kind of adjustments you know Pandora did after that first you know series they had because they really weren't getting anything with Lucaville in that first series. Now in this one here, he's starting to get it a little bit on the outside. The front's you know open up a couple of holes for him. So obviously the coaching staff for the Rockets have made some kind of adjustment. Throwing one pass on this drive. Gurton has Luganville next to him. Hands it off, looking for space up the middle. Still on his feet, steps over a couple guys, and ultimately, I think, picks up enough for a first down. And he did indeed. So another first down. It'll be first and goal for the Rockets. So you're watching that play there, you know, if he slipped out of the, the grasp of that kid, had him around the ankle, he may have been able to go to his right and had six points on it. Did get a first down? No. First and goal from the 10 yard line for the Rockets. Staying shotgun, Luthville this time on the left of Gert. Looks like he's sucking air right now as he's been carrying the load. Gert now rolling out, looking to pass. Throws this, Luganville with the catch, and they'll pick up five. You know, you know I don't know if you understand how, how tough that is to throw a pass when you're inside the 10-yard line. You know, everybody's bunched together. There's defensive guys all bunched up there as well, so you've got to really find your receiver and get that ball to him quickly in that situation. Coach Gert doing a nice job of doing that. Like we said, Gurton's only a freshman. Very composed freshman at that. Ball on the five yard line, they hand it back to Luganville. He cuts up field and he gets into the end zone. Rockets, an extra point away from tying this up 
with just over a minute left in the first quarter. And that'll bring on Suter to kick this extra point. That young man right there, Elam Suter, you know, 56 or 59. That's 94, almost 95% of his extra point kicks have been good. Uh, hopefully I didn't just jinx him, so we'll see what happens. Morris will hold. Kick is up, and it is good. 7-7, seven, seven, your score on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard as we step aside. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. Today's premier sponsor for the Macomb Panthers is Hoverman Insurance, focusing on giving our clients the personal customer service they deserve. Welcome back to Macomb and Doc Miller Field, where the score is tied 7-7 on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard after the Rockets respond to Macomb's touchdown with a touchdown of their own. Eight play, 80 yard drive, took three minutes and 12 seconds off the clock. Very effective drive, mixing you know, a lot of runs with Luca Bilton, but throwing the key passes when they had to. Gerton finding his favorite receiver, which was Morris on a couple of those, and then Luca Bill on one of them as well. Suter lines it up, kicks this one on the turf as he does most of the time. Will be picked up at the 31 yard line and a oh. nice tackle on the far side. Carson Meyer over there. It is indeed <laughs> Carson Meyer who started this season as a quarterback. Makes a big tackle there, and McComb will come back out. Now we watched uh, Pandora Gilboa's defense last week against Subsoil Valley, and they were lights out. I mean, their their uh, front line was dominating the, the Rams as well as their linebackers. You know, just making play after play after play. So. Let's see if they caught their wind after that first drive by uh, McComb. They need a turnover, really, from by these Panthers. Panthers run it to the left. Swisher cuts up field. Swisher still on his feet into Rocket territory in a Northwest Ohio recycling first down on the big pickup from Andrew Swisher. I'll tell you what, this guy does everything. I mean, he played a little quarterback as well. You know, he's carried now for over 1,300 yards so far this season. He's got nine catches for 152 yards, and he has one kickoff return for a touchdown as well. This time they'll look to pass. Woodruff has to step up. Nowhere to throw. Now goes deep down the field and oh. almost intercepted. Great coverage by Aiden Morris. Dangerous throw there, but nothing hurt. Not, not well, the guy you want to throw it toward. I say nothing hurt, but unfortunately, got a player down. It is Woodruff, and as they look at him, we'll step aside. 34 seconds to go here in the first quarter. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's first downs are sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. And Mr. Woodruff able to get up and walks off the field. We'll see what happens with him. He's got his hands over his head, but in the meantime, it's Andrew Swisher in at quarterback. Second down 10 for the Panthers, Swisher. Runs us oh, up the nice left, tap. and he's brought down for a gain of four. Number 17, Andrew Swisher. That was Derek Mag on the tackle. Derek Mag making the stop for the Rockets. Ends up being a pickup of three. They're down seven here. I was going to say, uh, on that pass, it was broken up by uh, Morris. That's, that's not the guy you want to throw over towards because he's got eight interceptions already this year. Two of them he's returned for touchdowns. So. Now Swisher on third and seven, and a timeout taken, or excuse me, that's the end of the first quarter. 
And we've got a close one for you. 7-7 the score as we step aside. Second quarter coming up after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Macomb for the start of the second quarter. It's third down seven for the Panthers. Andrew Swisher still in at quarterback as the snap comes back to him. And he's going to pick up a couple. And could be four down territory here. It's only fourth down and Andrew about Swisher three to go. Maybe four, excuse me. And Chase Woodruff gets the play from Coach Algy. He runs back into the field. A welcome sight. For Macomb. Yeah, you wonder if he got the, the wind knocked out on him. He's holding his, his stomach a little bit. Try the hard count. I don't think that he called a play. They sent a man in motion. That's Montana Pierce. And now a timeout will be taken. You see, Dart, my, my thing here is if you're trying to fake out the defense. The guy that runs the play into the game should probably go to the huddle and pretend he's giving them a play. Instead, yes. they lined up, and then he came running in and went under center. So a timeout taken by McComb. Pandora did not jump, and so 11-18 to go in this second quarter. A good game for you. It looked after the first two drives like McComb would be well in control, but they've done a nice job. Or excuse me, the Rockets did a nice job scoring on their second drive. Well, the Rockets did a nice job on defense, too, rebounding back after that first drive by McComb. Now, what's interesting here is you got a fourth and four, and I cannot believe that McComb was not going to go for this on fourth and four, you know, with the runners that they got with Swisher and Pierce and Altimer, Altimer Hauser as well. I mean, you, you've you got to run the ball and get this first down. But they're going to go back into punt formation. That's, that's, that's surprising if he kicks his ball. Of course, you, who knows? you got a guy back here that can run like the wind, so I'm not sure I want to think he's really going to kick the ball. Here's the snap, and they do kick it away. And this one over the head of the returner. Takes a hop and rolls inside the five-yard line. Well done there by the punter, Braden. Shoot, or, I'm sorry, I've got the wrong number there. Might have been Bryson Gold. Could have been Althauser. Yeah, it should have been Althauser. There we go. Yeah. All right. Braxton Althauser with the punt. Now the Rocket offense comes out and a chance to take the lead if they could repeat their success on their last drive. A tough hole when, you, when you've got your goalpost right, on, right behind you, you know. You got to be very careful on this one here. Now, this is an opportunity. Just, you know, Macomb defense too, and you got to be, you know, sure that you don't throw an interception or fumble the ball at this point. They snap the ball, they give it to Luganville. Luganville, nice cut as he picks up positive yardage and creates some space between the Rockets and their own goal line. Andrew Swisher making the stop. Well, the key for Luganville in this case here is. He makes that first cut past the first def you know, defensive lineman and then gets into the linebacker area. You know, but that first cut is the biggest thing for him. If he can get past that you know, lineman right off the bat, he's going to get some positive yards, three, four yards at most. Second down here. They'll run it to the right side. Luganville gets a couple more. Third down five now for the Rockets. And if McComb can hold them here, presumably some great field position. Eight of two on the play. That'll make it third down and yeah, six. I'm, now it's how much confidence you have in your freshman quarterback at this stage. You know, you got a third and six. You keep feeding it off to Lukeville. You're going to have to get him to the outside, though. He's not going to have any room on the inside because McComb's going to close up every hole they can right there. Gert wants to pass on third down. Gert looks deep toward the sideline, has a man, but he's pushed out of bounds. And incomplete. Good job by the McComb defense. Really nice pass from Gert. But Braden Shoot came over and knocked the receiver out of bounds before he came down. Yeah, great job by Braden Shoot. Get over there in a hurry. And, you know, like you said, great pass by Gert. And, you know, Morrison, Morrison, you know, had the positioning 
but you know, Braden Shoot just you know broke that play up by pushing him out of bounds. Now fourth down, the Rockets will punt. Swisher and Camden Glazer back to return. Glazer on the left, Swisher on the right. Boy, they're gonna have to get a good kick off of That one was very close to being blocked. Ends up being a nice punt, and it'll be returned by Glazer. Glazer gets tripped up at the 50. Ends up right at the 50. I think that was the bean bag. I saw the same thing you did, but then and that closer changed the look. color of his beanbag there. Yeah. yeah, the beanbag should be like a purple. Yeah, anything, anything but looking like something a, that's different. I thought, <laughs> what, what would you throw out there? Like Lock in the back, and there wasn't any. Great tackle, though. I mean, open field just kept him right there on the 50 yard line. Their center goes Woodruff, and a timeout taken by the Rockets right before the snap. Saw something they didn't like. So 9.33 to go. They step aside. 7-7 seven, seven your score here in McComb. High school playoff football on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets. 7-7 seven seven on that Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. 9.33 to go here in the first half at McComb. Panthers with a first down and 10 following the Pandora punt. They run the option play as Woodruff gets back to the line of scrimmage. Brought down by Ethan Luganville. Boy, both these teams doing a great job of, uh, you know, open field tackling right now. No gain to the play. That'll bring up a lot of one-on-ones -on -one going on out there. And both the teams are playing really well at it. Second and ten here. Swisher will run to the left side. Swisher hit. Stays on his feet. Still oh, on his feet. Look out. Swisher makes some guys miss. And he will prance into the end zone. It looked like he was going to go down three or four times, but he stays on his feet and gets the second score of the game for the Macomb Panthers. Oh, my goodness. You know, how he stuck through there, you know, like you said, Evan, he got hit three or four times, still able to stick through there, keep him on his feet. Once he got, his, got through that mess, you know, there wasn't anybody in front of him. He had open turf all the way. 50-yard touchdown run for Andrew Swisher. And now Meals on for the PAT to give McComb a seven-point lead. Kick is up. And it is good. 14-7, McComb on top here at home against the Pandora Rockets. We're watching high school football on WOSN. Today's premier sponsor for the Macomb Panthers is Hoverman Insurance, focusing on giving our clients the personal customer service they deserve. 14-7 to the score. Macomb on top after a 50-yard touchdown run from Andrew Swisher. The Panthers will kick it back to the Rockets. Ball game for you here. Second round of the OHSAA playoffs. Quarterfinal. This one kicked away down to the 12-yard line. Got him. Oh. Morris will return. Morris still on his feet. Oh, look out! Look out! Morris makes a couple guys miss as he crosses the 45 and gets up to the 46-yard line. Good field position for the Rockets as they start this drive. Yeah, he's a dangerous runner, particularly a dangerous kickoff return guy. You know, you got to make sure that you get a hold of him all the way around him because he's going to hurt you if you let him go through like that. I thought that kid had him, he was done right at him. First down and 10, Rockets. Now comes back to see how the Rockets can respond again after that touchdown by McComb. They were able to do it the first time around after McComb scored. Let's see if they can do it again the second time around. Curtin in that familiar formation. Russell to his left, Luganville behind him. Curtin pass, quick out route. That one's going to be caught. 
And a nice job by Colin Harris as he gets forward. Colin Harris. Near a first down. I'm not sure. About a yard short, I think. Half a yard, maybe. For the referee to put the ball down. Okay, so it is at the 45, a yard short. Good eyes there, Doc. Second down, one. Second down and one for the Rockets. Yeah, McComb's all expecting uh, Lucaville to, to carry the ball on this one here. Gert, the snap hands to Luganville. Luganville bounces outside. Luganville cuts inside. Still oh, on his feet. Look out, look out, look out. And brought wow. down from behind. A touchdown saving tackle. But another Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Yeah, we talk about this. You know, he's a stocky, hard nosed runner, but I'll tell you what, when he gets on the outside, he followed his blockers, bounced right off of him, went to the outside. Nice run down that right sideline down there, but he ran right past about three defenders. You know, a great, you know, touchdown saving tackle right there, but. I'll tell you what, he's such a dangerous runner. I guess he's not the leading rusher in the BBC for nothing. That's right. Looking good tonight. First down 10. We go right back to him. He goes up the middle and not much there. Picks up a yard. After that first in the series by Pandora Gilbo, they made, they made a lot of good adjustments. Lucanville's getting the yardage that he, you know, didn't get in that first drive. You know, he, he, the stuff over the middle, the off tackle stuff coming across the center, you know, he's not getting a whole lot there, but that's really softening him up to get him to the outside. Gert wants to throw, goes out right to Wyatt Russell. As they hit the fullback. <laughs> a little play there by the Rockets. It goes for a couple more. I'm not sure how many passes White Russell's caught this year, but not many. No kidding. So now a third and six. At the McCauley 11 yard line. Balanced offense from Pandora will go with an empty backfield. Four wide receivers split out left. Ethan Luganville split furthest out. Gurdon. Takes the snap, throws quickly, and that one's intercepted. Goes off the hands of the receiver, picked off. That's Donovan Hepperly with the grab. Or maybe Chase Woodruff, rather. A flag came out on that play. It came out after the interception. Yeah, that was marked off against McComb, no doubt about it, but Holding. Panther ball. So it is Panther football after the Woodruff interception. Chase Woodruff with the interception. That ball was thrown like a rocket right to uh, the receiver, just bounced right off his chest, right in the air. That went up in the air, you know, good 10, 12 feet before it came down to, to Woodruff. Good concentration by Woodruff, too. Ball at their own six yard line. So this drive starts from McComb's six yard line. Five fifty five left to go here in the first half. They run this one to the outside. Althauser. And Althauser goes down. Pardon me, that's Montana Pierce. Montana Pierce, the ball carrier. So many different guys that carry the football. It's hard to keep up yeah, sometimes, Yeah, it is, dark. it is. Nice tackle by Colin Harris out there just to, to bulldog him down. Yeah, I know. You, you Eight, six, pick six, a number. Eight. I mean, <laughs> right. Second down and four. Six-yard pickup, second and four coming up for McComb. And the tough thing is, is the numbers aren't easy to read on the McComb uniforms either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Split one out wide to the left. They'll run to the left. 
Number Picked 17. Up a couple more Andrew with Andrew Swisher, 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 short of the first down, but a third and one coming up for the Panthers. Third down and one for the Panthers. Woodruff runs the play in. And it's a big one for Pandora. If they can make this stop. There's so many options here for McComb to run on this play here. Hand it to the up back. Luganville wraps him up, but it's enough for the Northwest Ohio recycling first Andrew down. Swisher, Swisher the with the carry. First down, Panther. Yeah, that's a tough one for the Rockets because, like I said, there are so many guys that carry the ball. He, you just don't know who's going to get it. You, know, you think Swisher, but then you got Montana Town of Pierce, you know, back there as well. So, you know, you don't know who he's going to hand it off to. 18 yard line. Yeah. Just over four minutes to play in the second quarter. Halftime coming up. Run this one left. Andrews Another Richard, quick four or five yards. You know, it's like two with this become offense too. Is you know you've got Woodruff under center, but he's normally a wide receiver, and you got Swisher as a running back who can play quarterback as well. You know, so you don't know what's going to happen there. He could hand off the ball and have one of those guys throwing the ball. Such a luxury to have so many different athletes play multiple six. positions. And they pretty much dominated the all BVC teams, you know, yeah. first, second, and, you know, the, you know, the funny thing is, you know, the first, second, and, and they didn't have a single player on third team because they were all in first and second. <laughs> another run to the left. That's Swisher. He's got another first down. Andrew Swisher. Upended as he crosses the 30-yard line up first to about the 33. Andrew. Yeah, Aiden Morris with a saving tackle on that one there. are taking their time. Three minutes left in this quarter. Just put one out right. Hand it to the up back once again. Pierce. Pierce breaks a couple more tackles and another Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Montana Pierce, the third leading rusher on this team, but having a really nice night so far. Montana Pierce. And Montana Pierce showing what he can do in the open field too. Made a nice cut on that one there. He was able to get past the defender, get to the outside, get those extra yards. So, you know, he's, it's, it's tough for you, even for your linebackers in Van Orgo Boas, because you've got so many weapons coming at you. Swisher. Picks up just one or two as a helmet comes off. Number 60 coming off, that's Dylan Fenberg. Two twenty-two to go here in the first half. Second down and nine for the Panthers. Pierce runs in, Woodruff under center, second down, nine. This time it's Althauser. Althauser breaks a couple tackles. Althauser has wheels. He crosses the 20, and he gets in for the score. Wow. Braxton Althauser with his first score of the night. And the Panthers up two scores with a PAT pending. So much speed on your, you know, your running backs. Each one of them, different in their own respect, but each one of them with that kind of speed. Althauser limping on his way over, but I'll tell you what, you run that far, sometimes it takes you a second to recover as that kick is up. And Niels, no good. So, the score remains 20 to seven. Took the referees a second to make that call. Confused me, but. That is the call, and we step aside. It's 20 to 7, McComb on top. Tonight's first down sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. 
call 419-384-3392. Twenty to seven, Macomb on top here. Doc Miller Field. Second round of the state playoffs. Well, I mentioned earlier on one of the keys for for Chris Algie and his coaching staff was run the ball and get first downs. One of the other keys was to hit him with the big play, and you've seen two of them so far here tonight for Macomb on the you know the big run by uh, you know Swisher for the touchdown, and then you saw that with. Holzhauser running that one in for the touchdown. This one booted down the right side. Luganville. Luganville. No, that gets right get by it, him. It. He's got to pick this up quick. He does. And runs backward as McComb brings him down at the 14 yard line. Well, they brought him down to 10. Now the referee walks back. Luganville. Luganville. They got it. They got it. They're back to 10. Oh, wow. What a bummer. 159 on the clock. Two timeouts left for the Rockets. See if they try to push the issue here and score before half. At their own 10 yard line. In the shadow of their end zone, I'm not sure what you what you want to do on this one here. Maybe you just run it out. You know. Mary's Bird's winning. Gert hands this off to Luganville. Luganville picks up a couple. Luganville, the ball carrier. No timeout by Pandora, oh, so perhaps they will stop. be content to let this clock run through. down. Hey, you don't want to make a mistake right here and let, you know give McComb an opportunity to score again here in this Ain't first half. So you might be you know, not content, but you might be you know resolved to the fact that you're going to go into the locker room down 20 to seven. You know, pick it up in the second half from that point on. But you know, you just don't want to make any mistakes at this stage. Second down six. Hands to Luganville. Luganville with a nice pickup. Has enough for the Northwest Ohio recycling Luganville. first down. The it looks like the Rockets might think about a timeout. No, they're just going to call a play. Buck stops for the, the chains move. Bought their own 24 yard line. Going down inside the minute mark. One minute mark here. First half. First and 10. Gert has two split out to his left, one out to his right. One goes in motion, that's Morris. Gert wants the pass, rush from behind, now throws. He's going deep down the right side, and Morris with the diving attempt, but it just slips off the fingers. That is a good looking pass and a great effort from Morris. That was a great pass down there. You know, Morris almost came up with that thing too. Uh, yeah, he, he was laid full out to try to catch that that ball and just off his fingertips. Yeah, Henry, 14, 17, uh, under 34 on the clock, second and 10. And we're going to have a timeout by McComb. Like something on the field. Timeout, McComb. Another thank you to our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Sprunger Insurance. Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets. And the winner of this game, Evan, will face either LCC or Delft St. John's. And that'll be on our neutral field next week. Right now, obviously, you're watching this a day after it happened, so you can look up the score. But as we watch this game, LCC on top, 20 to nothing over Delta St. John's. Yeah, they're under on that. Carrie's down 14-7. Yeah. A lot of action. What did you say, Doc? 21 local teams playing tonight? 21 local teams, you know, going from the MAC to the WBL to the BVC, you know, all in action here in the Northwest Ohio from around this area. So. Great representation of football, which it always is in Northwest Northwest area. Second down, ten. Gert hands to Luganville. Luganville looking for the edge. Doesn't have anywhere to go as he goes down. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Might have fallen forward for some extra yardage. Clock keeps ticking. 
The so Rockets don't have to run another play. It looks like they might not. Yeah, they just need to go back in the locker room, regroup, you know, figure out how to stop the big play. That, that's the biggest thing. It's just two big plays that really hurt him here in this first, first half. And absolutely, and we'll see what kind of halftime adjustments the Rockets might make after the break. Halftime here in Macomb, it's the Panthers 20, the Rockets 7, right here on WOSN. Welcome back for the start of the second half here at Doc Miller Field in Macomb, where the Panthers have a 20 to seven lead over the traveling Pandora Gilboa Rockets. A big half of action and a couple 100 yard runners, Dar. Well, Ethan Lukeville's got 156 yards, but countering that on the other side of Macomb, you got a Swisher with 118, Altenhauser with 79, and Montana Pierce with 34. So it's tough if you're gonna run the ball for Pandora Gilboa, where you gotta go against those three guys too. But yeah, well, total offense, 208 yards for Pandora, 236 yards for Macomb, pretty close. And actually, Pandora's had the possession longer, but that's because, you know, Macomb got two, you know, long touchdown runs right off the bat, too. We've got a referee timeout on the field. Oh, they're working on the chains there. So Macomb will start this drive from the 35-yard line. On the 35-yard line. Yeah, we looked at, you know, that first half, too, you know, Chase Woodruff 0 for 1 passing, so, you know, McComb just run the ball and run the ball and run the ball, and that's what they do so well. Rockets able to stop McComb after just a yard on that play, and, hey, right now we're actually standing in the newly named Bob Smith press box, or officially Robert Bob A. Smith press box in honor of Bob Smith, someone that has been in this press box for 70 years of Macomb football. Last 30 years he has served as the spotter up here for the PA announcer. But can you imagine that, Dar? 70 years no, coming to Macomb football games. I cannot. I mean, I'm sure you've seen a lot of parents and grandparents and everything else that played this game here at Macomb as well. So long history and he's just a nice guy all the way around too. Mm -hmm. We've been up here with, with Bob a couple times, you know, and, you know, he just, you know, outstanding individual and just a great, you know, opportunity for him. And we're just, you know, good to be in this Macomb crowd can be proud of him. Now on third down and three, a flag comes out in the area of holding. The Rockets able to stop McComb at the line of scrimmage. It'll be decision time here because a fourth and three is certainly gettable for McComb. So do you want to? Oh wait! Never mind. It's a face mask against Pandora. So 15 free yards for McComb. I did not see that one. Just the first penalty against Pandora Gilboa tonight. But it's a big one and a costly time, too. I mean, they had an opportunity to put McComb in, in a real thinking situation, but instead, you know, McComb's going to get a fresh set of downs. And the Northwest Ohio recycling first down for the Panthers. Woodruff goes back under center for this first and 10. Sends a man in motion, and three flags come out. I think the entire offensive line for McComb jumped. And so... They got 15 yards. They'll give back five of them, but it'll still be first down, just first and 15 instead. That's a lot of laundry going up in the air at the same time out there. It was in sync, too. It was, yeah, it was. very nicely done. I don't think they rehearsed that, but it came out, <laughs> it came out really well. So the ball goes back to the Pandora 48-yard line, first and 15. Althauser and Swisher in the backfield. They'll pitch this out to Althauser. He's got a lot of space to run. Good job by Pandora getting there and filling that space because at first glance, there was a big hole there and was. a lot of space for a really quick Althauser to run through. And Carson Meyer again on the tackle on there. 
they will wrap him up and he went by him. Good recovery by that young man. Because you're right, it looked like he had a lot of space on that one side to get through. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage to bring up a second and ten. Now you don't know on this go team. Shaka now a Swisher. Woodruff split out far right. Swisher sends Althauser in motion. Swisher keeps it, but a flag comes out. False start against the Panthers. They'll give those five yards back. False start. Panther. Well, we talked about that. McComb penalized coming into this game 66 times for 554 yards, averaging 50.4 yards in penalties per game. And you know, a lot of times they're their own worst enemy when it comes to that because you know they get costly penalties at the you know times when they really have the momentum going in their direction. And now Blake Wittenmeyer will be in at quarterback in the shotgun formation. They spread out the field. Three wide receivers split out right, two out to the left. So it'll be the third quarterback to take a snap for McComb tonight as Wittenmeyer wants to throw, throws it, and it's caught. Oh, what a he pull. threw a dart to the 31-yard line. Camden Glazer with the catch, and it's a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Well, Blake Wittenmeyer is a junior, 6'2", has came into this game hit. Almost 83% of his passes. He was 28 for 34, 522 yards, seven touchdowns. And you can see why. That was a dart, like you said, Evan, right to the receiver, right with a defensive back all over him. And he just lit, lasered that one right there. Now Whitmire goes to tight end, and it'll be Woodruff taking a snap. Hands it to Swisher. Swisher Goodbye. is gone. Touchdown, Panthers. Three different quarterbacks take a snap. And it's the running back Swisher taking it into the end zone. Wow, he got through that hole so fast, nobody had an opportunity to put a hand on him. And I think McComb will go for two here. They missed the last PAT. Might be surprised if not. I'll put it that way. Woodruff under Woodruff pitches it out to Swisher. Swisher gets tackled. Good job there Carson by Meyer. Carson Meyer. No and so PAT no good. Score remains 26 to 7. McComb on top. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! And those Rockets have some work to do as the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard reads 26 to 7. McComb on top here in a regional quarterfinal on WOSN. This one kicked over Luganville's head and into the end zone for a touchback. So out comes Pandora for their first drive of this half. A pretty good first quarter, but the offense kind of stalled out there in the second. Yeah, it did, man. You know, they were getting some good runs from Lucaville there in the second quarter, kind of, you know, towards the end of the, the first quarter into the second quarter, but they just couldn't get anything really, you know, to move the chains a lot. And now, now they're gonna have to come back from a 26 to seven deficit, you know, which means they may have to go to the air a little bit more with Gurton, which he's fully capable of doing. Throws it quickly out left. That one's caught. That's Colin Harris. And Harris with an eight-yard pickup. Might be closer to nine yards when it's all said and done, but either way, a second and short coming up. Now this one here, you can, you know, I can see him trying to bounce Lucaville to the outside. They haven't got a lot of running room on the inside, so they may have to keep bouncing back at the outside again. Luganville with space and a nice open field tackle. But a nice pickup and another Northwest Ohio recycling first down as he gets up to the 40-yard line. Good job by that offensive line to open up a big hole for him there. You're looking at Braden Higmeyer, you know, the left tackle out there, Mitchell Blank, Eli Lucaville, you know, Seth Carell, all and Jake Fisher all in that front line out there for Pandora Gilboa. 
And they just opened up a big line, a hole there on that right side. Play clock down to 11 as the Rockets look at the wristbands. Play clock at five. Girton gets the snap, quick pass out to the left. It's Harris again, and you can tell those defensive backs are content with, the, with the underneath routes right there. Glazer was in coverage and just backed up, let Harris come back to the ball. Yeah, they don't want anything broke for a long gainer on them. And you're right, Evan. They're just kind of playing off about three or four yards and just letting him take that that throw underneath. And, you know, just, they're content. You know, they may let Pandora give up and move the chains a little bit getting down there, but, you know, they've been able to stop them when they get inside that, you know, 20-yard line. Curtin steps up in the pocket, throws over the top, and good coverage by Glazer as he knocks that one down. Camden Glazer in on the coverage for the Panthers. So a third and four coming up. Big thanks to the Macomb Athletic Department for the halftime treats. And some wings and some pizza and some pulled pork and all the goodies. Appreciate the spread. Shout out to Absolutely. our camera guy, Nick Nunez, for running and getting it for us. MVP of the broadcast, Nick Nunez, as this one's passed out right. Oh, and a comeback, job. but no good. Oh. Just couldn't hang on to it. He had the catch. No, just couldn't hang on to it. He hit the ground. They have to. There you go, get the ball back. So fourth down four, a weird spot for Pandora because they really don't want to punt this ball away, but it looks like they will. Fourth down and four. Yeah, that's tough to give the ball back to this Macomb rushing team because they can need a lot of time off the clock. And they do line up to go for it. Fourth down four. Two wide receivers split either direction. Girton to pass. Girton throws. Comeback route. Caught. First down. Northwest Ohio recycling first down as Colin Harris comes back and makes the grab. You know, we talked a lot about Aiden Morris and his 1,000 yards receiving this year. Colin Harris, you, you mentioned him briefly, but 54 catches for 789 yards and nine touchdowns coming into this game. Definitely a nice number two to have. Yeah, it certainly is. And, they, and you know, we're going to see a lot more of these guys for the rest of this game, I can tell you that right now. Curtin throwing up top, and that caught. one's caught by Harris. Harris, Colin Harris with the reception. Nice pitch and catch there. That was just kind of a jump ball. And Harris got up and first made the grab. Rockets. Another first down. We got a six foot one guy and Harris going up against a six foot two guy in Glauser. So either one of them could have got that one, but Harris had the position on the inside. So Glauser really had to reach over the top of him to try to get that. They run with Luganville and he's able to power his way forward for two or three. Luganville, the ball carrier. And look at those, we said, had 156 yards in the first half. Broke off the long one for about 51 hey, yards. But, you know, bring up the second so down far eight. here in the second half, they've used him. Since they're down 26 7, they've really had to go to the air more and not be able to use him as much. It was a pickup of two, so second down eight. Girton pitches it out. Luganbill looking for the edge. Luganbill still on his feet as he gets down to the 15. That's going to be a close one. I think he's just short. Oh, we might have a measurement. We'll see what happens here. And no measurement. They just call the Northwest Ohio recycling first down. I think I've seen, that's the first pitch I've seen from Gert, you know, to Lukeville. I mean, the rest of them have been handoffs, so that's the first running the option really the pitch out to him and that was very effective to get him to the outside more. Three wide receivers split out left for Girton and he keeps it on the ground. Luganville, flag comes out. I saw that one from back here. Luganville gets into the end zone but that one's certainly coming back. The referee's already made the call. Right. You know some holding calls are obvious some of them are like that one where there's no question one bit. 
And it makes you wonder if the Macomb players heard that too, and, you know, saw that as well, and just kind of gave up on the play because it looked like Lugabel got around that corner very easily. So 10-yard penalty takes the ball back to the 25-yard line in a first and about 19 here. Girton drops back to throw. Girton throws this one up in the air. Jump ball and incomplete. Almost intercepted. It was right there. Almost intercepted. Braxton, Altheuser. Yeah, Altheuser bounced, you know, batted it up in the air and tried to recover to get it on the second second drive, but it just batted just out of his reach. And I'll tell you what, this offensive line for the Rockets has done a really nice job in, pla in pass blocking situations. Yeah, right there, Luganville did a nice job picking up the blitzing linebacker from the left side. Now Girton alone in the backfield. Low snap, quick pass, and that one's caught, but immediately brought down is Aiden Morris. That's Wilson Grubb on the tackle. Wilson Grubb making the stop for the Panthers. I'm not sure that's really the play they really wanted to run, but I think Gerton just wanted to get rid of it because he knew he probably would have been sacked for a lot bigger loss. The loss brings up third down, 27. And the Rockets working on figuring out their personnel. They're going to have to call a timeout here. They have no idea what's going on. Uh, they run the play anyway. I think that was the play. So I think they were trying to cause I confusion. Think, they I were think trying that to. Was the play. Okay, well. It worked. He could tell from the way Harris was doing it. I mean, he was just kind of moseying around there, kind of looking like he was confused and everything else, trying to get the defensive backs to play off of him. And that was really the, you know, the play that they were trying to run. For the Rockets. Now the referee wants to stop the clock. Oh, he must have gone out of bounds. Okay, so fourth down 14. A lot of confusion out there, but I think we're settled here. Man in motion, Girton to throw, Girton to the end zone, up, jump ball, flag comes out, ball is caught. Yeah, they're going to get, looks like a pass interference. So Colin Harris with the grab, and unless it's on the offense, this touchdown will stand. Still waiting for the official. Here we go. Pass interference against the defense. So touchdown stands. A big one there from the Rockets. These things were starting to get a little bit out of hand, but they slow the bleeding. And a PAT pending here as Suter trots on. That's Colin Harris on the catch, right? It was indeed. The referees having a chat, possibly about the clock. Still waiting here as they break their huddle. There's been a lot of confusion in this whole series. Yes, so they're going to force that on the kickoff. Okay, so they're going to enforce the penalty yardage on the kickoff. Elam Suter still out for the PAT, but with the penalty, you wonder if the Rockets might go for a an onside kick. But some work to do beforehand. Good snap and hold. Suter's kick is up, and it is good. So your score here in Macomb, 26 to 14, Panthers on top of the Pandora Gilboa Rockets as we step aside. 
We'll be right back with more after this on WOSN. Today's premier sponsor for the Macomb Panthers is Hoverman Insurance, focusing on giving our clients the personal customer service they deserve. Welcome back to Doc Miller Field here in Macomb, where the Panthers lead 26 to 14, 328 to go here in the third quarter as the Rockets will kick off from the Macomb 45 yard line following a penalty. And Suter's gonna try an onside kick as it takes a hop, goes off Macomb, ball still uh -oh. loose. I, I think, think the Rockets got it. Got it. They, got it. they wow. did indeed, that ball hopped exactly when Suter wanted it to hop. And he gets the ball back for the Rockets with great field position starting inside the Macomb 30. Wow. Yeah, there was no way they were going to try to kick that ball out, you know, because he said it, not with Suter's leg, but that was a great onside kick. So this drive will start from the Macomb 28 yard line. Recovered by the and you wonder with the momentum if Girton might just throw up another one for Harris as he's had a couple key catches here in the second half. Well, like I said, you got you know you got Harris going up against Glasgow out there, and you got a six foot one guy and a six foot two guy, so it's anybody's ball when you throw it up. Keep it on the ground to start the drive, and Luganville with a nice powerful six or seven yards. Looks like six, so second down four coming up. The Rockets could very well find themselves only down one, or down one score, excuse me. By the time the fourth quarter kicks off, Girton in the shotgun with three wide receivers split out right. Luganville lined up to his right side. The snap was low, but they get it to Luganville. Oh, look at that run. Still on his feet. Luganville still on his feet and into the end zone. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. He is so hard. He is such a tough, tough runner. And you just saw it on that play right there. He just bounced, spun around, and found that little seam down the left side and was in for the end zone for the touchdown. And that, you know. You can't ask anything more from your, for your, the BBC relieving rusher than what he's done tonight. Suter back out for another PAT attempt. He doesn't miss many. Rockets need another man in the game. Here he comes. Suter 56 for 59 coming into this game. He's hit. Two of them already tonight, too. That one's up, and it is good as well. So just like that, a five-point game here in Macomb, 26 to 21. The Rockets on top on the Springer Insurance scoreboard. Tonight's first downs are sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. 2.40 to go in the third quarter. Macomb leading by five. And another squib kick, and this one might go to the Rockets. Oh, no. They might have it. We're still waiting for a call. They're pretty animated on that far side. Still nothing from the referees. Macomb and Macomb it. does get the football Whoa. back, but a scary, scary play there. I'll tell you what, sports here have a lot to do with momentum. And right now the momentum is in Pandora's you know, side of the ball. You know, that was almost recovered by Pandora on another kick that really was Kind of an onside kick, but not an onside kick. But yeah, it's kind of how they kick off most yeah, of the time. Most of the time, and boy, that was, that was a tough, tough break for for Pandora, but good break for McComb. Woodruff under center, McComb running this to the left side, and a big stop by the Rockets. 
And you can see the the rocket, you know, defense is now fired up. Boy, they, you know, you got to be careful. You know, you, you let one of these guys slip through, and you, your adrenaline starts flowing a little bit too much. And you can get out of position, and suddenly now you've got one of these running backs for Macomb bursting down the field. There's Noah Burkholder on the tackle for the Rockets as Althauser takes us to the right side. Nice patient run from Braxton Althauser as he picks up seven yards, and it'll be a third and one. That's going to bring up a third down and one. Now, normally you'd figure a third and one with, you know, these kind of running backs in, in Pierce and Althauser and, you know, and Swisher Band in the backfield and Woodruff as well. You know, a third and one doesn't seem you know, that daunting of a task. But. And they run it to Swisher. Swisher with the big Northwest Ohio recycling first down as he runs right over Colin Harris, who was holding on for dear life. And hey, if Harris misses that tackle, that's probably yeah. another score for the Panthers. So a good job by him. Yeah, stiff arm there by, uh, you know, Swisher as well, try to keep uh, Harris at bay. Just picked up about three or four yards for that. They run it on first down and they run right into the back of an offensive lineman. That was Montana Pierce on the carry. Seems like they use Montana a lot like that, yeah, you know, those off, you know, over the tackle runs. You know, he gets, gets beat up a lot. He's not a real big guy out there, you know, compared to Swisher and, you know, Woodruff and Althauser. Now Swisher bouncing off a tackler. Carson Meyer in there will be credited with the tackle. Swisher falls forward for three. Third down five coming up for the Panthers as Swisher limps his way off the field. That's going to bring up a third down and five. We don't got to snap the ball. We don't got to snap the ball. So with third and five and 15 on the clock, McComb does not have to run another play here in the third quarter. I doubt they will. I think he has Swisher an opportunity there on the sideline to maybe just cramping or something. You know, give him a something chance to get back like in. That perhaps. Well, we'll find out here shortly after the break. Fourth quarter coming up, 26 to 21. McComb leads here on WOSN. Welcome back for the start of the fourth quarter. It's third down and six for McComb. They run this to the outside. They pitch it to oh. Alt Hauser, and he's brought down by Aiden Morris and a big, big stop for the Rockets. Wow. That did not look good from the moment it started on that play. So McComb will punt this ball back to Pandora. Tell you what, Aiden Morris came in with 47 tackles altogether. Two tackles for losses, and you can add another one right there. Colin Harris back to return this punt. Rockets almost get to it. It's a nice high kick, a bit short. Drops near the 30-yard line and ultimately lands at the 26. So the Rockets offense will come out now. A chance to take the lead in this game. They trailed 20 to 7 at halftime. Well, this is reminiscent of the first time they met this season when it ended up 35 to 28. The only thing is it's flipped the other way because in that game, McComb had to come back from being 14, you know, being down 28-21. So now Pandora down 26-21, so almost identical to what the first game was. Gurton in the gun, hands this to Luganville. Luganville yeah. upended. Oh. Luganville, the ball carrier. It's a Andrew loss of two. Swisher. Andrew Swisher was the one in the backfield bringing Luganville down. Second down, 12 now. Second down and 12. I'll tell you, there's going to be a lot of sore bodies tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hard hitting in this game, which there always is. 
And it only gets more difficult from here. LCC winning their matchup. Uh, winner of that game moves on to play the winner of this one. It's a tough team over in Lima Land. Back to Luganville. He slips in the backfield. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but that's about it. They give him about half a yard, so a third down and a long 11 coming up for the Rockets. And that always puts you in a tough position, too, you know, if you're the offense. Because now you're third 11, you know, the defense thinks, oh, they're going to have to pass the ball. You know, everybody seems to think that's what's going to happen, you know, more likely. So, you know, that gives the defense an opportunity to adjust themselves accordingly. They split three out wide left. One to the right, Luganville on the right side. Girton looking to throw. Goes on the wheel route and it's knocked down by Glazer. A big play there and I think the Rockets have to punt this ball away. Still plenty of time on the clock. Yeah, you have to punt it away. That should be Aiden Morris dropping back to punt. Averaging about 31 yards per kick. So it's fourth and 11. And then Glosser, Morris back, back to punt. Glosser back to return. This kick's a bit low, but Glosser has to backpedal to catch it. Now looking for space as Glosser breaks a couple tackles, still on his feet. Gets up to the 43-yard line, and back out comes the Panther offense. Take it out, my friend, Burkholder. And Burkholder making the tackle. Now, this Macomb offense is built for situations like this where you want to run as much of the clock down as you can, and obviously you always hope to punch the ball into the end zone. If they can keep the chains moving, that's the biggest thing for them right now. And you know, like I said, but, you know, we've seen them do this before where they've used to, you know, this, this tandem running, you know, offense to eat up an awful lot of time off the clock and keep the offense off the field for, for the other team. And this is the opportunity for them to do that. Now, big thing for Pandora is can you force a turnover of some kind? Penalty against the Panthers. So there's a flag down on that play, actually, on the far side, right around the 42-yard line of the Panthers and it's a hold against McComb, so the ball goes all the way back to the 20, or sorry, the 33 for the start of this drive. Now Swisher takes the snap at quarterback and follows some blockers out right. Got a couple yards on that carry. And they'll give him two, so a second and eight coming up. Play. Ball right at the 35-yard line. Second down and eight. Swisher's still limping just a bit yeah. as he's walking around. He's a tired boy, too. You can tell that. He's done a lot. Yeah. Offense, defense, the whole, whole nine yards. and it's, it's tough. A lot of hard hits out there, too. That's going to wear on you before the night's over with. Play clock down to five. Swisher... As his running back move from right to left, takes the snap, Swisher keeps, tosses it over the top. That's Brad Meals. Meals off to the races, and he's brought down and thrown out of bounds. Crazy play there. Is yeah, looked was. like McComb just wanted to run the ball, then over the top goes Swisher, and Meals off to the races, and a big Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Wow. Yeah, good job by Swisher. Just as you know, see Mills out Ball there opening, the you know, the flat. Nobody around him. Yard able to get it over the defender to him. Woodruff now under center for McComb. Ball at the 43 of the Rockets. They run to the right side. Althauser cuts back to the middle, and he picks up about two, maybe three. Rockton Althauser, the ball carrier. Yeah, the Rock defense have got to come up big there right now. They got to get a couple of really good stops here to keep uh, McComb from continuing to run this clock down. Ball right up to the 40 yard line, second down seven. Third 
Three backs in the backfield. Two tight ends set. They go left. Swisher. No. Swisher wrapped up in the backfield. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. But a third and seven coming up. Carson Meyer coming up on the tackle again. Yeah, Carson's been all over the place tonight. It's going to be a key third down call here for McComb. He's had quite a bit of success on third downs throughout the season, so getting about 35, 36% of them, I believe. The play clock runs down to six as Coach Algie takes a timeout with 7.17 on the clock. McComb still on top, 26-21 on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets. Third down seven for McComb as they put Andrew Swisher back at quarterback. Or no, they don't. Excuse me. Woodruff is under center. Woodruff does hand to Swisher. Swisher needs to make some magic again. happen, and he can't. A host of tacklers there. Wyatt Russell in there. Aiden Morris. Ethan Luganbill all wrapping Swisher up. And a lot of times, Dar, that's what it takes, three or four oh, yeah, guys absolutely. to bring down a good runner like Swisher. And now it's fourth and nine. Yeah, Morris got the first hands on him, and then he got help from the other two guys coming in there too, which, like you said, Evan, that's what you need against a runner like Swisher. Punt formation. Aldhauser kicks it away, and it takes a hop and rolls just beyond the 20-yard line. And so the Rockets with another big stop. Still six and a half to play in the fourth quarter, and a real opportunity here for Pandora to knock off the number one seed. And I'll tell you what, Evan, you're, gonna, you're sending out here, you're down 26-21, 6.34 left to go. You got a, a freshman quarterback in there who has doesn't play like a freshman at all, you know, but this is really a, a pressure packed situation for him right now. Gurton hands this one to Luganville. Luganville really nowhere to go. Nice job by the left side of that McComb defense. Swisher back there for the tackle. Second down and 12. And the later it gets in this night, the harder it is to see those numbers. Oh, it is terrible, isn't it? Second down 12 after a loss of two. Combs shows blitz from the outside. Girton steps up, now throws, and that one's incomplete. Whoa. That was a dangerous, dangerous pass right there. Right in between two defenders, but he was able to get it to his receiver in between. But yeah, that would have been a tough catch. Worth taking a shot, though, you think, in a situation like that, instead of taking a sack. Get the ball up in the air. So third down 12, 5.51 on the clock. Girton splits two out left, one out to the right. Girton, again, throwing deep. No one there. Well out of reach of his target, Colin Harris. And another fourth down and i don't really think the rockets are in a good spot to go for this no they can't fourth and 12. there's still plenty of time on the clock as a coach sometimes it's a tough pill to swallow but it's one that needs to go down absolutely and you know you say plenty of time on the clock but again you're going against a macomb you know offense that can eat five minutes up in a hurry you know i mean you know they'll feed you a constant Rods and running backs now. Pandora did a nice job holding them last time. Can they do it a second time again? Andrew Swisher back to receive the puck. Swisher and Glauser back to return. This one, a nice punt Whoa. over everyone's head. Glauser might pick it up. He does. Glauser looking for space. Doesn't find much. 
a return of about four yards. So this drive will start from the 30-yard line of McComb. The Rockets still some work to do trying to get this ball back. Now they're going to have to get a big, big time stop right now on this one. They're going to, you know, they try to force some kind of turnover if they can. I mean, they're going to have to force that ball out of the hands of one of these running backs. If they can, to try to get that turnover, that would be key. But, you know, McCombs running backs just don't cough up the ball that often. Comb comes out in shotgun formation, and Coach Algie takes his second time out of the half. So with 5.29 to go, we step aside. McComb on top, 26 to 21 on WOSN. Today's premier sponsor for the Macomb Panthers is Hoberman Insurance, focusing on giving our clients the personal customer service they deserve. Welcome back to the fourth quarter of action here in Macomb as Andrew Swisher takes the snap and runs out to the left side. Macomb trying to keep this clock running. Now, an interesting storyline here, Dar, is if Pandora does somehow go up in this game, McComb only has one timeout left. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, but, you know, Chris Algie and his coaching staff going to put it all in line on this drive right here. They want to keep moving this change. They want to keep this, this ball and just run this timeout and not have to worry about, you know, whether or not Pandora is going to get the opportunity. And a false start against McComb. So back him up five yards. Second down, seven. Oh, it was definitely a run to this side, so he was trying to get a head start on the block. It was going to be a run to that. That's huge for Pandora and the fact that you know, that makes it a second and seven now instead of short yardage. Swisher alone in the backfield once again. Sends a man in motion. He'll keep it running left. Swisher gets the edge. Swisher gets a first down, but a flag comes flying in from the back judge. That was a nice throw, too. That was about, you know, almost 20 yards. There's a flag? Yeah, there's a flag. Holding on us. And it is a holding penalty against McComb, thrown by the back judge. Yes. Not something you see often. He had a clear vision, obviously, of where where that play was developing at. So that'll back him up 10 yards, and instead of the first down, they'll have a second down and 18. That's quick math. I might be wrong about that, but it's second and long nonetheless. The officials call a timeout on the field. The officials call for it. Is it? Try to determine what. Yeah, everyone just needs a breather, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. Well, after throwing that flag as far as he threw it, you know, he's probably icing, <laughs> icing his up arm the down. shoulder. <laughs> I. I could definitely change Plus this Pandora game if one it. team did call a timeout. I'm getting well. It wasn't Chris Algy? I know that. So, because he, he didn't look like he was, his players were coming over to him very quickly. So, so second down, 17. I was close. Here's the snap, Swisher keeps it. Swisher out to the right side. Swisher still on his feet as he goes down across the 30 up to the 31 yard line. 
And it'll bring up a third down nine for the Panthers and another big play for the Rockets defensively. Boy, we've had a lot of those tonight, haven't we? Nothing bigger than this one right here for the Rockets. They're gonna have, you know, they're gonna have to stop you know, this Pandora or this McComb team dead to rights. I mean, they can't even give up any yardage at all in this play right here because I can see McComb with a fourth down and short yardage going for it. Swisher again in the shotgun, takes the snap, goes out right, has a couple man to, men to block. Oh. He stays on his feet, and he powers forward. He's going to be short, and decision time for the Panthers. Yeah, Carson Meyer almost had him, had him around the ankle, but he was able to shake that off there. You know, now, now it comes down to what do you do? Fourth and three. If they don't get this, I mean, that's... That can be devastating. I think they'll punt it away. Althauser is back yeah, to punt. Yeah, he's back here to punt. But even then, you're giving the ball back to the Rockets. In, you know, decent field position, possibly. Althauser kicks it away. And it gets held up in the wind as it bounces at the 40 and down at the 41. So now, three and a half left. If I'm not mistaken, now the, the timeouts are not on the board, but if I'm not mistaken, the Rockets still have three timeouts remaining. First down and ten for the Rockets. Now you just don't make any mistakes. You don't throw, you know, you got to be careful throwing that traffic at this point here because McCombs picked off, you know, a pass already tonight. They got the opportunity, you know, to, to get in there and get another one. So you got to be really careful about where you're going to throw the ball. Lucaville hasn't gotten a lot of yardage in this year in the second half. So, it's going to be an interesting drive here for Pandora. They will start with the ball on the ground. Luganville wrapped up, brought down. And with forward progress, he's down at the 36. He eventually goes down at the 30, but that forward progress means it's only a loss of four. But it's still a tough start to the drive for Pandora as it brings up second and 14. Well, they're going to force this, you know, McCombs is going to be go after Lucaville and force Gert to have to throw the ball. They want to put the pressure on that freshman for Pandora Gilboa in this situation. You now with the time running down, or two, 250 and counting. Play clock's down to two, and the Rockets burn a timeout, not what they wanted to do. Wow. With 2.38 to go, it's the first time out taken by the Rockets of the half and will step aside as well. The Sprunger Insurance scoreboard reads McComb 26, Pandora 21 right here on WOSN. Tonight's first down are sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Rockets could use a first down here. It's second and 14. They throw over the top, and that one's caught. Colin Harris reels it in. It's a nice pickup of about seven yards, and it'll bring up third and seven. And that was a good catch by Colin Harris, too. He was a fight with the two defenders. Over that Third ball, too, and Harris was able to hang on to it. Now he faces the, another big third down. I'll tell you what, this game has been filled with third down opportunities that have been key third downs. And this is none bigger than this one right here for Pandora. Gurton takes the snap, steps up, throws. He got hit hard as he threw, and that's going to be incomplete. And a flag comes out. I'm going to say he held him up there. Girton limping over to the sideline. And they're going to call defensive holding rather than pass interference. Either way, it's going to be a free first down for Pandora. So 10 yards against McComb from the line of scrimmage. Free first, first down, down by Northwest Ohio Recycling. The 
Referees again having a quick chat. Now they make the call. They spot it off 10 yards. Macomb fans not happy. It was kind of an interesting play as the receiver tried to go between two defenders and got held up. The question becomes, did he just run into the defenders or did they hold on to him? And clearly the referees have an opinion on that one. First down, 154 on the clock. Girton, quick throw right side. Almost oh. intercepted as Althauser broke on the ball. And if you would have caught that, he might have no, been he gone. He was gone. There was no doubt about it. And he looked back at the uh, receiver, too, so that he grabbed his arm as he went by him. Wow. Yeah, he, he definitely would have been gone for a pick six. Ball on the 46-yard line. Problem is, is can Gurton set his feet right now? He's, he's limping pretty bad. Gurton to pass. Throws over the top. Has a man. It's Carson Meyer. Meyer inside the 20. How about the freshman Gurton? What a pass. I'll tell you. You know, I was talking about it. he was limping really bad out there. Could he set his feet, you know, to make a pass like that? And he did, and just nailed Carson Meyer right, right in the numbers. 135 and counting on the clock. Three wide receivers split out to the right. For the freshman quarterback, Corey Girton. He'll hand this to Lugan Bill. Lugan Bill with another big pickup. He's close to a first down. He's going to be short. And the Rockets want to spike the ball. Yep. Girton has to hustle in. Second down and two. Luganville's shoe came off. They might want to think about a timeout here. Nope, they're going to run the play. Girton hands back to Luganville. Luganville, oh, right side, brought down in the now backfield. they're going to have to call timeout. I don't think they're going to here. Yeah, yeah, now they do. With 50 seconds on the clock. My goodness, the Rockets have certainly made this a game. They are looking at 14 yards to pay dirt, a third and seven coming up. Obviously, four down territory. Dart, I don't really care who wins this game, but I am so happy for Corey Girton and the way he's been able to carry himself and this team here in the second half. You're absolutely right, Evan. I mean, Here's a freshman quarterback, came in and had a great game last week against the upper side of the Valley. Comes into this game, he's been put in pressure situations all night long, particularly here in the fourth quarter, and he's come to, you know, come to play. I mean, he, you know, he's, he's heads above, you know, what you would expect from a, from a freshman in this situation. And, you know, he, that passing through to Carson Meyer, you know, after, after getting hit you know, before that, you know, kind of limping around back in the backfield, fires a, a a rocket right to Carson Myers to get him in this situation right here. I mean, the kid is impressive. Third and seven. Gurton takes the snap, wants to pass, throws end zone. It's Harris, and the ball knocked up in the air. It's intercept. Oh, oh, he's in out of bounds. Well, Dar. <laughs> uh, well, we have the benefit of DVR and rewinding to see that one again. I have an opinion on what happened on that play. I will keep it to myself, and I will review this later on. Doesn't matter to what I think. It's fourth down and seven. Yeah, it's, the, it's the guys in the white and black down there that made the call. <laughs> so here we go. Fourth down, right down seven. The Rockets escaped. Disaster on the last play, but they have some work to do. Girton to pass, steps up, oh, yeah. goes down. He no, lost he the football. And it is a turnover. McComb with 35 seconds on wow. the clock has hung on. Ooh. And, uh, and the old side on the McComb side was a big sigh of relief right there. A tough. Hard fought game by both teams. As McComb breathing many sighs of relief on a beautiful night 
for high school football in Macomb. Coach Algy takes a timeout. I think he just wants to make sure his team's on the same page. But yes. really, whether Pandora has one or two timeouts remaining, I couldn't tell you. Or oh, yeah. no timeouts yeah. remaining. I, I don't know what it is. But either way, Macomb just to be able to knee this ball. Yeah, they'll go into victory formation and just knee it down it once, twice, whatever it takes. I mean, what a, what a game. I'll tell you what. Just like the first game was that these two teams met. Yeah, you know, we've seen Macomb a couple of times. We saw him, we saw him in against Arlington in a game similar to this as well. So you know, I mean, they, there's no doubt about it. This Macomb team is 10 and one right now, going to the soon to be 11 and one. And it's been hard fought all season long for them. They've had to make so many adjustments on offense. You know, with their their starting quarterback Grant Song going down early on in the season. You know, and and they. They've come to it. Come to the task. Coach Hershey takes a timeout. Presumably the last one. Uh, just guessing. I think I've seen them take three timeouts by now. So McComb not really talking anything over. They're going to stay to the, stay at the line of scrimmage. Want to thank our sponsors again, our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Sprunger Insurance, our first down sponsor, Northwest Ohio Recycling, and our premier sponsor, Holberman Insurance. Victory formation once again. All they have to do is get the snap. And the Rockets gave it a shot. Yeah, they Can't did. blame them. This is the last game of the season. I don't know why we'd be frustrated about a team doing their best to get the ball back. It is a penalty against them, but hey, yeah. give it your all, right? Hey, why not? I mean. Yeah, there's, there's, both these teams are going to be feeling this tomorrow. This was a hard hitting, you know, rivalry game between these two teams and they've they played a lot of them in the past you know and this is just another one that you can mark down because you know you saw a lot of hard hits out there you saw a lot of great runs a lot of great passes we've seen them some maturity you know some growing up by some players out there as well especially Corey Gert you know putting that that position taking over at the quarterback position and he's had to grow up really quick you know in these playoffs and he's been able to do that but you know, when you look at McComb on the, on the other side, a team that just runs and runs and runs. They don't have to throw. In fact, they throw one pass all night long. You know, they all they have to do is just give it to those running backs that got back here, and they will overpower any team out there. The clock runs. It'll hit zero, and a fantastic year comes to an end for the Pandora Rockets. And Macomb will move on. They'll face LCC next week. Again, thank you to our sponsors tonight, Sprunger Insurance, Northwest Ohio Recycling, and Hoberman Insurance. Thank you to our guy Nick Nunez up doing the camera work tonight. Thank you to the Macomb Athletic Department for their hospitality. And as always, thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to high school football on WOSN for Dar Nevergall, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Again, your final from McComb. It's the Panthers 26, the Pandora Gilboa Rockets 21. Have a great night, everybody, and God bless.